Welcome to the next video, number 44. We're going to be looking again at the sonnets where there are some more clues that tell us of the work of Edward de Vere, the 17th Earl of Oxford, and the Rosicrucians. In video 40, I showed how God, Vere, and Rosie Cross are encoded three times on the cover of the sonnets. And in several videos, I've also explained how sonnets 9, 10, 18, 122, and the catchword OR, all printed with a dot or point, conceal another message. Their gematria values, and once decoded, reveal the letters Y-I-H-I-O-R and rho chi or rho chi. Yihi or is Hebrew for fiat lux, meaning let there be light, and ro chi is either meant to be read right to left, spelling Cairo for Christos, the light, or it's ro chi, which are initials for rosy cross. Regarding the subject of this video, what's important to keep in mind is that fiat lux and Cairo are referring to the part of the message that stands for God in the God Vir Rosy Cross code. The code uses the same Kabbalistic methods mentioned by John D. in Monus Hieroglyphica, Gematria, Notericon, and Xeroph. When we apply Notericon, which uses the first letters from each of the marked sonnets and the single marked catchword OR, we get the letters I-F-O-R-S-T. Then, applying Xeroph and unscrambling the letters, we get F. Rosy T, which means Fratris Rosicrucis, or Fraternity of the Rosy Cross. Applying Xeroph again, and the letters spell four T's. Alexander Waugh explains that Edward de Vere is four T or the fourth T. One of the first things I'd figured out when I started working with the Shakespeare codes is that using Gematria, T is equal to 19. Four T's add up to 76, as do the letters that spell Oxford. It's the reason why you'll find Sonnet 76 beginning with a double V letters that De Vere sometimes used to sign his name with. And if you look at the repeated count value of 88, it also equals 4 T's. Which is why Sonnet 88 also begins with a double V. We'll be looking again at these double V characters again in a minute, but I just want to point out that, so far, we have two sets of examples of God, Vere, and Rosy Cross in the sonnets. On the cover, where it's actually found three times, and within the marked sonnets and turnover or with God's first spoken words, fiat lux, followed by rho chi, initials for rosy cross, or chiro, meaning Christos, and Genesis, when God says, let there be light, the next words are, and there was light, meaning Jesus. So we have God, then Vir, represented by four T's, and F rosy T for fraternity of the rosy cross. Okay, I believe I found the third set hiding within a game of numbers that uses the double V characters. Again, De Vere sometimes signed his name double V, which I learned watching Alexander Waugh's videos. Now the next thing is, and I've explained this in another post, if you count the number of sonnets printed with a double V, there are a total of 17 sonnets. And when you count the total number of double Vs, there are 19. As you can see, sonnet 2 begins with one double V, and sonnet 57 has two. Again, there are a total of 17 sonnets printed with a double V, and when you add up the total number of double Vs, there are 19. 17 and 19 are gematria values for the letters R and T, or Rho Tau, which are initials for Rosy Cross. To figure out the next name, notice how the double V's are printed, either at the beginning of the sonnet in a large font, or later in the verse in a smaller font. When these are counted, there are a total of five double V's in the smaller font and fourteen in the larger. These are also gematria values. Five is equivalent to the letter E, and fourteen equals the letter O. E, O are initials for Edward Oxford or Edward Oxenford. We have examples of them spelling it both ways.
So by counting the number of double V's, we have initials for E.O., Edward Oxford, and R.T., Rosie Cross. There's another way to count everything, and it results in letters spelling God. Instead of counting the double V's, we're counting the number of sonnets the double V's are found in. There are 14 sonnets printed with double V in the large font, and 3 sonnets with double V in the smaller font. The Gematria value of 14 is equivalent to O, and 3 is equivalent to C. Some research on the internet revealed what these letters stand for, and it's not Orange County. In Greek, the word Theos means God, and is abbreviated with the letters Theta Sigma. At some point, scribes, whether unintentionally or not, misread the word Has, meaning who or he who, for this abbreviated form of Theos and there are some cases where the word Haas was altered by adding a line and changing the Omicron character so that it appeared as Theta. This has led to some controversy which is beyond the scope of this video. The point is, there were times when Omicron Sigma was read as the abbreviation for the Namum Sacrum, or sacred name, Teos. The person we believe responsible for encoding the sonnets was John D. If he didn't finish encoding it before passing away, then it was completed by someone familiar with his methods. This game of counting the sonnets and double V's results in two letters, like E-O for Edward Oxford and R-T for Rosie Cross. So D, or one of the brethren, was aware that the Greek letters Omicron Sigma, which looked like O-C in Latin, were used for Teos. Whether or not they knew it was a mistranslation, I have no idea. There's also the possibility that because there is no character for theta in the 23-letter Latin alphabet, they use the letter that most closely resembles it, O for Omicron. Simply add a line, like the scribes did, and it's theta. Though I'm not really sure about this idea. Though a mistranslation by earlier scribes, here the letters O-C, the result of the gematria values for 14 and 3, stand for teos, meaning God. This perfectly completes the puzzle, and we have God, Veer, and Rosie Cross appearing three times in the sonnets. On the cover, in the marked sonnet numbers and turnover or, and in the 17 sonnets printed with double V. Now I'm going to share something that includes the italicized words discovered by fellow researcher Sean O'Donovan. Notice how the first sonnet with the italicized word rose isn't numbered. Here's the list of all the italicized words in the sonnet numbers they appear in. Again, the first sonnet with the word rose isn't numbered. Twenty-two is twice eleven, and what Sean did is, he counted the number of sonnets of the first twenty-two italicized words, beginning with rose to the word adite in sonnet 126. Sonnet 53 has three italicized words, so 53 is counted three times. Sonnet 55 has two italicized words, so 55 is counted twice. And here are the sonnet numbers of the first 22 or twice 11 italicized words. The first sonnet isn't numbered, so it's given a value of 0. And when you add them together, the total is 1740, the number discovered by Alexander Waugh that indicates Edward de Vere, who was the 17th Earl of Oxford and the 4th T, or 4T. This number is found throughout the sonnets and is actually included in the page count. One of the first things I'd figured out when I got my copy of the sonnets is, if you start counting from the page where the sonnets begin, sonnet 40 is on page 17. Also, the gematria value of the letter V is 20. Two Vs equal 40. There are 17 sonnets printed with double Vs. 17 double V is 1740. Now what Sean discovered made me wonder if there could be a reason why these specific sonnet numbers were chosen to include the small font double V's. Again, there are 17 sonnets printed with this character, 
So were these chosen to include the smaller font double V because of the sonnet number value? I've already shown that there are five double V's in this font and 14 in the larger. Five is equivalent to E and 14 is equivalent to O, giving us the initials for Edward Oxford. But is there a reason why sonnets 39, 57, and 150 were chosen to include these? I added the sonnet numbers and got 246. According to history, Edward de Vere died on Midsummer's Day, the 24th of June, or 24-6. This is also the nativity of John the Baptist, the patron saint of Freemasonry. Usually when the state or code is being referred to, it's 624. But because there are exactly 17 sonnets printed with the 19 double V characters, and 14 sonnets are used to provide us with the letter O for Oxford, that leaves only three sonnets out of 17 with which to put the remaining five double V's that provide us with the E for Edward. The sonnets only go up to 154, and there's no combination of three numbers that don't go beyond 154 that will add up to 624. So 246 may have been chosen to include this important date as part of the double V codes. And one last number. I added up all the sonnet numbers printed with double V's, sonnet 2, 12, 17, and so on, up to sonnet 150, and they total 1070, or 1070. Remove the zeros, and we're left with 1 and 7, or 17, Edward de Vere's Earl number. Thank you to Alexander Waugh, Chris Johnson, Patrick Jennings, and Ron Raffel and to Sean O'Donovan for finding the 1740 hidden within the first twice-eleven italicized words. And thank you for watching.